We start with a very nice email. And then we'll talk about some special call sign suffixes. And finally, why would you want a transceiver with dual receivers like a 7610? This time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Just put Mailbag Monday in the subject, and you might have a question answered. You might not. Who knows? Guys, let's get into it. We've got some great stuff to talk about today. This first one is just, it's one of those nice emails that just kind of warms you up in the cockles of your heart. This viewer is writing, Hi Mike, thanks for the videos, buddy. First, let me say you crack my ass up. Love your wit. <laughs> thanks. The patience and dedication to the technician class uh, operators is very commendable. Thank you. I was a tech till a few months ago, and you and Eric, KJ4YZI from Ham Radio Concepts inspired me to study for my general by emphasizing 10 meters to the tech class operator. That is awesome. That is exactly why I do it. That is, oh man, that is, that's so cool. I found a whole new world on HF. Yes. Isn't it awesome? Uh, I was a licensed CB radio operator in the 70s till they dissolved in the 80s, but still kept one of my POV, POV for pulling ATVs. That's all CB talk. I have no idea what you're saying there. Uh, so his roots are deep. I'll, I'll, dude, I'll follow you anywhere, rubber duck. <laughs> you also got me to try POTA and enjoying it when I'm not working. That's sweet, dude. Started my YouTube channel as well. You should have told us what it was. Uh, you would have gotten a free plug. Uh, just wanted to drop you a line, brother, and thank you for what you were doing. Sitting here watching you pitch <laughs> on the sad ham video and laughing my ass off. So, yeah, he said this a little while ago. Uh, if you're ever up here in Kentucky, look me up. I live in the country, and we will jump in the Jeep or on the side-by-side, -side and I'll get you lost in the woods. Maybe even show you where Ned Beatty's drawers are hanging on a limb. Hope you like banjo music. How about no? Next. Aviation Mobile Stroke Whiskey Zero. This, this, this one's got me, so I'm going to need your guys' help on this one. Uh, so I'm doing a late POTA, a POTA late shift at my favorite part tonight, and I get a guy saying his call sign with Stroke Whiskey Zero. Not Stroke Whiskey Oscar, that's a Whiskey Zero. I asked him what that meant, and he said Aviation Mobile. I asked, are you in a plane right now? He said, yes, over northern Canada. His call sign was Victor Alpha 3 Mike Golf Golf, and he said add Stroke Whiskey Zero after it in my log. I did, but where can I find the definitions for the stroke letter, thanks in advance. Um, Mike, thanks for writing in. This one has got me baffled. I've, Mike emailed me this question, gosh, probably a couple weeks ago, and I've been, I've been slowly trying to research this. The most I could find, um, <laughs> and I hate to say is on Wikipedia, um, but every website kind of says the same thing. So basically, in um, let's just use the United States and Canada as an example. So we can so, so we have an agreement, the the states and Canada, where like it, it's kind of a reciprocal agreement. I, as an amateur radio operator, can go into Canada and use my call sign. I just have to append it uh, with. Uh, I think I would have to put so if I'm in like VE seven land, so like right here, um, I would have to say I'm K at MRD stroke VE seven. Could, it might be vice versa. And if someone from Canada comes down here, they would be VE7XXX stroke K7. So we would add those suffixes uh, just to indicate that I'm an American operator operating in this particular numbered section of Canada, VE1 through VE, I, I think they go through seven. As far as the stroke whiskey zero, uh, in the United States, the United States has all of the K call signs. So we append our suffixes with K7 or, or just K. And then like, so if it's, if these guys in four call land, he'd be VE7 XXX stroke K4, you know, if he's in like South Carolina or something, right? When we're mobile or aviation mobile, the only thing I've been able to find as far as like special suffixes are really six and there's really only four of them that 
that we use, maybe five. And it's just this paragraph right here. So if you're portable, you're stroke P. If you're mobile, you're stroke M. Like if you're driving down in your car with your Tar Heel or your, your ATOS or something. If you're aeronautical mobile, that's stroke AM. Or stroke Mike Mike. Mike 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 would be maritime mobile. So, uh, and then it says here, or A for operation from an alternative location that is registered with the licensing authorities, whatever that means. And then occasionally stroke QRP. That's all I've been able to find. So, uh, the guy, and, and the weird thing is the guy is in Northern Canada. So why would he be stroke, uh, what did you say? Whiskey zero? Yeah. Like whiskey's not a, a, a prefix for Canada. Uh, I don't know if they have a zero, like if there's a zero land in Canada. I think it just goes one through seven, if I'm not mistaken, from like uh, east to west, it goes one to seven. So east would be uh, the ones and the sevens would be the west. Um, so this, you've got me. If, if anybody knows, uh, and if VA3 MGG is watching, why the Whiskey Zero? Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. There's, there's just the Maritime Mobile, Aeronautical Mobile, Portable, and uh, whatever the other one was. So, yeah, I don't know, dude. This one's, this one's got me baffled, but it was pretty neat to, to go down this road and research, <laughs> even though I didn't really, I didn't really dig up anything. Uh, anything groundbreaking here but i thought it was i thought it was a neat question either way and and again share it with the community the more people in, are involved the more we can learn so thank you for writing and i appreciate it last we have a question i'm really not the best guy to answer this question but i can at least kind of show you this viewer is asking aside from the convenience factor of operation what is the advantage of a dual receiver radio I reviewed the data on Bob Sherwood's site for testing the receiver performance, and I don't see a huge benefit to spending more cash. I feel like I'm missing something. The 7610 is currently selling for $3,250 at HRO, yet the 7300 is selling for $1,100. Buying two 7300s is $2,200 with a savings of $1,000. Yeah, uh, a ASUF TDX uh, 101D is 3700 and all the numbers there. Uh, from a performance aspect... There isn't a strong case to justify the extra costs with purchasing any manufacturer's single box with two receivers and two transmitters over two separate boxes and single receivers. Is there either way you'll want two antennas to maximize performance? You don't necessarily need two antennas, uh, but it helps. I mean, I'm, I'm running two antennas right now, um, but that's mostly because I have a lot of noise on this antenna and the one that goes this way is uh, a little bit clearer. Unless you're a big contester, I can't really justify spending the money unless you're doing things like I'm doing where you're, you're, you're doing YouTube and you know you want to show the screen of the 7610 as you're live, uh, live streaming or something. But newer radios are going to have that output, like the 7300 doesn't. Um, but to, to answer the question, let's go here. So we're looking at an ICOM 7610 now that does have dual receive uh, capabilities. And uh, there's, there's two volume knobs on here. There's two receivers. There's only one transmitter. So you're only going to transmit on that, on that left uh, VFOA, the one that's actually highlighted right now. So you can see 14345 is highlighted, 14260 is highlighted. Now, we can. there's really two things that I can really imagine somebody wanting a dual receive radio for. So let's set this up for, for dual receive. First, we just hit this dual button at the bottom, and now we get two waterfalls. There's also a button on here that says dual watch. So we're going to click that. So see that little green button there that's coming up, dual watch. The headphone jack on the radio has a stereo output, so you can listen to one band on one ear and one band on another ear. You can do multiple bands, you can do whatever you want. Okay, so you know if I wanna have 21347 on my left ear or my right ear, it doesn't matter. Uh, whichever volume you have, you can hear. So maybe I want both to be on 20 meters. So the first example would be, let's say I'm uh, calling CQDX. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a DX Expedition. And uh, 
I'm I'm working split. So when they say like you're he's working up five to ten, okay. So what he's doing is so if if I were to hit, uh, let me get off frequency here. Um, let me turn my power all the way down too. If I were to hit the transmit button, testing K at MRD, it's going to transmit on that top left uh, frequency regardless. Even if even if this is selected, testing K at MRD, testing K at MRD, we're still transmitting on that top left uh, frequency. So basically, <clears throat> I would leave the transmit on. So let's say I'm on fourteen three three eight, and now I want to, so, and here I'm, I can turn up this volume, okay? So let's just say we want to find a clear frequency. Let's go 335, whatever, okay? I don't, I don't really need to hear this volume, so I can turn that down. If I'm 5 to 10 up, I'm going to be listening. Whoops. Let me go back here. I'm going to change that to uh, change my sub-channel. So that's, the, that's my receiving channel. And now I can tune around here. So if I'm five to 10 up, I can turn up this other volume and I can see, okay, well maybe this guy's calling me right now. I can still transmit K at MRD testing and I'm not, I'm not transmitting on top of that guy. We're, we're kind of working split without working split, if that makes sense. So now I can go, because I'm only transmitting on 14.335 and I'm listening five to 10 up, I can use my VFO to scan where I'm listening, and I can see that, and I can hear them. Uh, it's it, I run this system mono, so you're not going to hear this in stereo. But if I turn up channel two's volume with the bottom frequency or the, or the right, the bottom waterfall, the right frequency, that would only come out of my right ear. And you can make it stereo if you want, but see, so I would listen maybe with my right ear on one frequency, listen with my left ear on another frequency uh, as I'm as I'm working that pile up. So here we can see we've got a few stations here. Maybe these guys are all coming back to me, just as an example. So I can tune up to them. These guys are calling me, pick out their call sign. K at MRD, you're five nine in wherever, right? And then you go work another guy as, you, as you're hearing them. So it spreads out everybody's call signs a bit so you can uh, so you can hear them a little bit better when you when you have everybody when you're on the receiving end and you got 500 people calling at you at once, it's a little hard to pick out their, <laughs> their call signs. So by tuning around in the frequencies, uh, you know, doing that that up five to ten, whatever that that's what they're doing. Okay. The other thing that you could use the dual receiver for would be maybe something like field day, where maybe you're trying to work somebody. They've got a big pile up. So let's say we're on, uh, we're trying to work somebody on the top band on 14335. Okay, so I can turn that volume up. Let's say here's here's a frequency. Let's say we're trying to work this guy, but he's got a ginormous pile up, and our and our 1500 watts and our beam pointed right at him still isn't getting through. So we can keep trying every time he says QRZ. Keep in mind, maybe he's only in my left ear. I can still turn up on my right ear, the bottom frequency, okay? And we can tune around and maybe listen for some other station uh, while, we're, while we're trying to work this guy. Because again, if we just transmit, we're always gonna transmit on that, that top left frequency. The right side is, is only a receiver. Regardless of what antenna you're using, it's always the top left is the, is the transmitter, so. That's what I can ascertain from uh, having dual receivers. It's it's really for contesting. Um, I'm sure if you if I were into CW, I know I know some of the CW guys use this a lot. Um, maybe one to send and one to one to receive, or they're receiving two people. I, there's guys that work like two stations at a time. Like their left hand's doing one thing and their right hand's doing another. It's insane. So that's uh, what I would say you would want it for. Do I use the dual function? Not really. Maybe if I'm listening for one person, I, I will use the second channel uh, or, or second frequency or band or whatever to, to tune around and, and maybe hear something else while I'm hunting POTA. Um, but that's about it. I, I'm not a huge contester, but uh, 
I have a radio to do that. So maybe I should, <laughs> maybe I should start. So great question. Hope that helps guys. If you're contesters, if you have any input on dual receive radios of this kind, um, put, put it in the comments, but no, I mean, if you're just looking to operate casually, you do not need a radio like this at all. Uh, as far as receivers, you know, the, the new radios, the FTDX 10s and the 710s, the new Yaesu HF radios that are, you know, in that $1,700, $1,500 range. Uh, yes, on that Sherwood report, they're better. Are you ever going to notice that in real life? Eh, maybe, maybe not. It's You're jumping over uh, dollars to chase pennies at that point, but you'll have thousands of dollars still in your bank account that you can spend on power supplies and antennas and coax and all the other things that actually matter more than the radio so i hope that helps answer your question guys if you have questions for me please shoot me an email k8mrd at icloud.com put mailbag monday in the subject and you just may have a question featured on an episode of mailbag monday in the meantime don't forget to like share and subscribe follow me on twitter at k8mrd and we will see you again on another episode of k8mrd radio stuff 73 guys